Welcome back to Alex's Computer Lab. In the last episode, we started working on recapping the power supply on our Macintosh LC2, seen here. However, as it turns out, the shipment of parts we had was for a different model power supply. So I went out, uh, following on the video I made showing how to order capacitors and how to, what to look for in those capacitors in order to set a caps. Uh, given COVID, they took a little bit of time to arrive, but they have arrived here. So they're in this box right here from DigiKey that you saw me place the order for. So let's go ahead and dig in and see what they sent us. Okay, so as before, they seem to have sent us some wrapping paper. DigiKey always sends a parts list just like this. Um, we will see. So let's open up this wrapping paper and see what we have. I'm just going to dump everything into this box. DigiKey actually wraps very nicely. I appreciate their packaging quite a bit, uh, their open size, because all this material is recyclable and I go through a fair bit of it. So I hate throwing non recyclable paper or non recyclable packing materials away. So please. If anyone's ever listening to this and thinking about shipping me something, please don't use styrofoam peanuts or anything I can't recycle. It drives me bananas. So, okay, let's see what we got. We got rid of all of our packaging material and finished all of our crinkling. So let's see. I recognize this big cap here. This is probably our primary cap. This is our 180 microfarad 400 volt cap. Let's check. The, we had that before, of course, but it just wasn't the proper size. So let's check and see if I measured properly when I ordered this. Seems to be reasonable. So this is the capacitor right there, if you can see, and then there's the negative on it. And again, it's a Nishikon 105 degrees Celsius cap, just as you saw me order. 180 micro, uh, microfarad, 400 volt. So if we look on the board here, if we line it up, Looks like that is going to fit. Yep, there we go. It fits perfectly. What a concept. Okay, so there's our first capacitor. So then right next to it, we have our C13. Let's go through and find C13 and figure out what that is. So let's see here. This is C8. This is C182123. This is... C19, C17, C20, C11, C22. Oh, because this is C11. Duh, never mind. Be good if I could actually read. Okay, so here we have C11. So in this video, by the way, you're going to see me mostly stuffing caps and then soldering them. So again, we're matching up this stripe right here you can see next to my thumbnail, the negative stripe. We're going to match it up with the little black on here which represents negative. So there we go. Got that guy in there. And then we fold the legs over to hold it in the board. Okay, so that's done. Let's see here. Next ones we have. We have, that's right, looks like I've still got a leg in the board here. I'm going to have to get out. I forgot about that. So we can probably go ahead and do that. Let me move this out of the way temporarily. Find a spot amongst my collection of junk. Let's see here. Let's get our pliers. So the leg is right there. So all I really should have to do now that the capacitor is gone is heat the bottom of the PCB and it should come free. So let's see here. So I believe it is right there. Assuming we can get good contact. If not, we may have to add more, uh, more solder to the bottom of the board. I'm 
feel it move a little bit, so it is moving. I'm really taking the lazy way out here. I really should have more solder to the bottom of the board because this joint is kind of a mess, so I guess that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's see here. Tin the tip of my soldering iron. That's much better. Okay, so now we've got some fresh solder on there. It should melt better. So let me again, let me grab hold of that leg. Let's get it out of there. Let's, see, let's get a better grip. It's out. So now we're just going to have to clean out that hole. It actually doesn't look too bad. Let's see here. It looks like it might be clean enough. So, okay, it looks like we may be okay. So, that capacitor is C17. Okay, let's find C17 in our bag. Finished with pliers, we can put them back. Let's see, C17 and C20, which again are 120 microfarad, 16 volt. So, we'll go ahead and do those. So again, following the procedure we set before, so we're going to align the negative strip on the capacitor with the black mark on the board. Now we got to see, ah, looks like maybe I have to do something with the other hole that I wasn't just pulling out of. Looks like it is not clean enough. Okay, I suppose it's time for the desoldering gun. I'm sure you knew, being it was my video, that there was going to be use of the desoldering gun here. So we're heating it up. And as always, the gun is impatient, as is its owner. Let's see here. I, again, I may have to put some more solder down here because there's very little solder in this pad because I did a pretty good job of cleaning it last time. I suspect I am, because there's just a little bit of a leg in here. Oh, wait a minute. Am I? Oh, I see. That's what the problem is. I'm still cleaning up the wrong bloody hole. That is what the problem is. So, uh, if you see here, so this right here is actually what we should be trying to do. With. This is the proper hole. And whoever built the power supply originally just wrapped over a leg. And what I did is I desoldered one leg of a resistor that ends right next to it. Got it. You would think after all these years I would know my right from my left and my top from my bottom. But if you would think that, you would be wrong. So let's put this out of the way again. Let's solder that leg back down before I forget and wonder why the power supply doesn't work. So let's see here. Again, tin the tip of my soldering iron and solder it back. And there we go, we have a nice joint. Okay, now. I think that hole is clear enough now. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Yep. Now we got it, finally. 
Okay, so that's done. So C17 and C20 was the other one. So which one was C20? So that should be is it that one. The labels on this board are not the easiest to read. Yeah, that should be C20. Okay, and again we're lining up our negative mark with the black mark on the board. Notice, by the way, I'm not being too careful with this board, even though this is a high voltage board. It has been discharged for over a week, um, and I checked it, if you remember last time. So if you're handling a board like this, please do be careful. I don't have all that many uh, viewers to begin with. It would not do to have any of them be electrocuted. Okay, so now we have C18, C20, and C23 in this box, which are all 1200 microfarad, 10 volt. Okay, 18, 21, 23, so there's C21, all right, there, okay. C22, so we're not going to put anything in that. Here's C18. Again, making sure we get our polarity correct. Let me straighten this leg a little bit. Looks like it got a little bit bent in shipping. Now, if you notice, these caps are not exactly the same size as the ones that came out. It's again, as long as they're not bigger, that's not a problem. C18. 21 and 23. So this one, which I cannot see, C23. Okay. Okay, so that one is good. So we only have a couple caps left. We have two left. We have C22 and C19. Let's find those. There is C19, and there is C22. So we'll go with C19 first, because it's a larger capacitor. But again, none of this work is too terribly taxing, because this board is just not all that big. And again, it's single-sided, so that, that makes the whole process easier. C19. You will see me checking over and over and over again because I just don't want to get them wrong. Okay. Never hurts to check one more time. You may feel silly, but it's better than doing it wrong. Especially getting the polarity wrong because electrolytic capacitors polarity is very important. Um, if we get it wrong, they will explode. So we don't particularly want to do that. Not that it would be the end of the power supply, but I would have to make another order and wait for it to arrive. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of that. A lot of folks, by the way, will say that the right thing to do when pulling these legs off is to cut them off and not uh, pull the tape off like I just did there. And they're not necessarily wrong because it does leave residue on the legs when you pull the tape off like that. However, in this case, it's because I want the legs to be different lengths because uh, the, the positive leg on almost all devices is longer. So therefore, it's one more check. So I also know these are big holes and that little bit of residue is not going to make a huge difference. And so there we go. There are all of our capacitors mounted. So now, the next thing we do is we break out our soldering iron. And after we clean our tip, we'll get started soldering. Okay, so let's uh, solder this big capacitor first, because that sounds like fun. Again, the big trick with these capacitors is you don't want to overheat them. And again, for a hole as big as this big one, we do have to sort of get in and get out. It's one of the reasons why I don't solder at a higher temperature than I do. Again, I'm soldering at 350 degrees Celsius, um, which I think is about 700 Fahrenheit. 
but you do want to make sure your solder flows here because this is an important joint and we don't want any internal arcing. Okay, there's one leg. And again, one of the things you can do, because I, I did linger there a bit on this joint, is I can move on and solder something else and give the cap a, a minute to cool down. So I will do that. So I'll solder that leg on that capacitor. Okay. And then I'll come over here and solder this leg. And again, I'm not particularly concerned about the heat on these. I'm not lingering that long. The heat is not that high. But again, I'm just showing you an example of, of good practice if you are concerned about heat on these devices. The other thing too is I'm trying to get the, the uh, solder to flow through the vias. In this case, this is a single sided board, so the, vetas, the vias are not what are called plated through vias. So again, not critical, but again, just good practice. Okay, so that messy one again. The biggest thing I am being careful of here is because um, there's not a lot of PCB and therefore not a lot of PCB mask on this board between the traces. So I'm just being very careful not to bridge a trace. Because if I did that in a power supply with as much power as in these, even this small low power supply, um, that would uh, create a pretty spectacular failure. I don't particularly want to do that either. Okay, so I believe I have one leg soldered on every one of the capacitors. So now I'm going to go back and do the other legs. Okay, that leg looks good on the big capacitor. Okay, that one is done. Again, you'll see me start spinning the board as it seems useful to me. Definitely position anything you're soldering in whatever way makes it easiest for you to be able to see well and get a good joint. It's like, for example, I like to be left and right because I'm right-handed. I like to have my soldering iron to the right of whatever leg I'm soldering. That just makes it easier and I can see better and get a better joint. Okay. I'll angle this a little bit. And again, I'm just going 90 degrees off where I happen to fold the leg over. Soldering is definitely not a speed contest. There's no particular reason to attempt to go faster than you need to. Don't get me wrong, I'm excited as anyone else to see if this uh, power supply works once I fix it. Uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time, but even so, there's always that little bit of doubt and said, you know, what did I do wrong? What, what uh, mess up is going to cause what problem on this sucker? So, I am quite curious. And again, I just want our LC2 to live again. That's the whole point of what we're doing here, and part of the point of Marchintosh is to bring back some of these machines that should have more life. Because again, there's not a lot that's really wrong with this machine. If you remember, you remember it powered up on, on the first try, so that's fairly impressive and not what I was expecting. I was expecting to see battery damage, I was expecting to see a lot of things. But uh, we didn't, so given the machine's in great shape, let's just do what we can to, uh, to make her live on. I believe that is all my legs. So let me go ahead and trim them. As you saw me do before, I will go back after I finish trimming legs, and I will reflow the joints. It's a little bit more difficult on this board because I, uh, there's so many other things on the board, and I didn't just solder them all. So for example, I already lost the legs on that capacitor. So it is, which one is it? Ah, right there. There we go. And again, most of the solder joints actually are pretty good. I expect to see on a machine made board from this vintage, at least some crummy joints, and I'm really not seeing that, so. The quality of the work that was done on this board when it was new was pretty good. Oh, 
that stuck to my finger. This joint is just a big glob. But that's the way the folks who designed it made it, so we'll go with it. All our joints are looking nice and shiny, and again, that's, that's a quick uh, way of determining if your joints are good. If they're shiny, they're probably good. Solder does go a, a really obvious gray. It just looks unpleasant and I don't know how else to describe it, just, just very matte if the joints aren't good. And that's how you know it's a cold solder joint. Probably don't need to keep all these legs here, but I'm kind of compulsive about keeping things. That's probably why I have so much junk. Okay, let's trim this one. And this one just doesn't look. There's at least a mark on that joint. I'm going to reflow that. That's not one I just did, but. I think it's just flux residue, but I just want to make sure. That looks much better. Kudos if any of you all catch me reflowing the wrong joint. It's certainly possible. And our last two legs. Certainly not the right leg. Which is it? These two. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. So we're gonna try something new. Someone suggested to me that Goo Gone is a good way of cleaning. Leftover, uh, leftover flux off of boards. So what the heck, we'll give it a shot. Although I think we actually have to open up the bottle first usually. Okay, let's see. It smells good, so at least that's something. It'll be interesting to see what residue the goo gone itself leaves on the board. The other thing, of course, is because we know some of the capacitors on this board leaked, I am also trying to clean up any electrolyte on the board that I may see. So, because of that, again, giving it a really good scrub does not hurt. So, as you can see, I'm kind of I'm going at it pretty good here. And again, this is a an ESD safe brush, so it's always something you want to use. Again, there's nothing on this board that is all that sensitive, but still, good idea. Interesting, there was a little whisker on that, whatever that was. I don't remember what that is on the top of the board, but a little whisker there. Yeah, these are definitely the capacitors that suffered the most damage. And I do see a little bit of damage to the traces here, but traces are so big that I'm really not all that concerned about it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but it definitely does look much, much better to me. I 
you definitely do see some scratches and things like that, but again, it is possible that that trace is damaged as a scratch all the way through it, but I think it's okay. So on any normal machine, uh, an AT power supply, ATX power supply, etc., what I would do to test this is I would bring this up with a minimal load on it, but I don't really have anything handy to do that with. Um, so we may actually be trying this for the first time on the LC2 itself, which is not really what I would prefer to do. But I, again, I might not have a choice because I don't think I have another load to put on it handy. I probably should have a load, uh, a standalone load cell, but don't have one. You also may be, may remember that in a previous video, you saw me trying to remember how to assemble this thing, and I took it apart the very first time. And you would think, having gone through the experience, that I would have remembered how to do it, but you would be wrong. Okay, that goes like that. Okay, so those... There's the power uh, connectors there. There is all the components in. Okay, there's this screw right there, the grounding screw. And here's all the screws from the unit itself. And I really do not remember which is which. Although it is obvious that this screw goes outwards. I'm going to guess there's a good chance it's this one right here that goes there. Obviously I can go look at a picture of this and see it completed and that will tell me. But usually grinding screws are, are a good size. Okay. Let's see here. So of course these go through there. And you can see the two zip ties right there. That's a somewhat primitive form of strain relief. So one zip tie goes on each side. And let's find the top. So we have, we have four screws, one of which is tapered. So the tapered head should be obvious. I think that one goes right there, so we'll try it and see. Yeah, I think that's the case. Okay, so we have three screws left. So one goes there, so one is there, one is there. Where's the third one go? Ah, there's one that goes right here on the bottom too, right there. It's not that one. Okay, so I guess I'm not gonna think that one goes from inside. So actually I think it is that one. It just goes down the other way. Again, smart people make diagrams or take pictures of these things before they take them apart. Let's see if these threads are going in. They sort of are. It's interesting, that's a sheet metal screw. So I'm guessing it is probably this screw that goes in there. Yep, it is. So that's one way you can tell, because that's a machine screw. So one of these screws now is a sheet metal screw and the other is a machine screw. Let's see, so that one is clearly a machine screw. So I'm guessing yeah, that's what it is. So this one down here is a sheet metal screw. Let me 
making sure our wires go in the right place. And correctly capture the wire. And this is the part that I remember was difficult last time, is trying to figure out exactly what goes where. So let's see, I know these go down here to properly trap those connections. That goes there. Over the end. I believe, if I remember correctly, that, that two tabs go both inside like that. We'll see in a second if that fits. Yeah, I think I may have gotten it right on the first try. What a concept. So there's our reassembled power supply. Let's put our last two screws back in. And then I will have to clean off Goo Gone off my hands. Again, it may have been smart to leave the power supply open so I could check voltages. But, meh. We'll go with it. It's not like there's any risk other than me electrocuting myself. So, eh. Who cares? Oh. Darn it. I think I let this... Oh, good. It popped in. Good. So I let that pop out, but I was able to pop it in without disassembling it again. There we go. There is one recapped Mac LC slash LC2 slash LC3 power supply. It looks not too bad. And now for the final test. Let's see if this machine actually powers on. Well, that's a good sign. There's some useful clicks from the hard drive. Just a great background on the screen, but it does mean that we are getting a sync signal. There we go. So we've gone gray, which is good. And there's our cursor. There's our hard drive booting up. So it looks like our recap was a success. Woohoo! Now we just gotta see if the machine actually runs a little bit better than it did before. Again, you can see we're back to black and white again, and that's because, again, as you see before, there's no PRAM battery in this machine. I'll be putting one in in a bit. But things sound good. The hard drive sounds nice and popcorn. -y. These uh, Quantum Pro drives really did sound like that. And just I, it's always a sound I enjoy as a kid when working on these machines. I enjoyed the popcorn sound of the drives. So I see a little bit of interference in the display. I don't know if that's coming through on the video or not. But again, that may well be that the motherboard needs to be recapped. We already know we have the caps for that. So that's something that's on my list of things to do too. But the power supply was the most important. And again, as you see, this time the mouse works, which is a darn good sign of the fact that we've got enough voltage. And darn right, the computer was not shut down correctly last time. There we go. It's the first time the desktop of this machine has been seen by me. I have to say, it looks pretty good. And then we do about this Macintosh and see what we got. We have 10 megs of RAM, which is the max on the Mac LC2, of which we're using 3.6 megs for system software. We're running System 7.5, which looks good. As you may see, there's a fair bit of flickering on the screen. Uh, in the pause between the previous portion of the video and now, uh, the patient seems to have died. So there's a good chance that uh, caps on the board, just the heat of uh, running for that amount of time. So I left it running for about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, just gave up the ghost, but I still I think our recapping of the power supply was successful For anyone who doesn't trust me and thinks that uh, it may be the power supply at fault here on the voltages I've set up my multimeter here, and I'll do a quick demonstration of the voltages here So here I've got the ground and then we'll check Primary 5 voltage 5 volts DC and you can see 5.17 very steady. It's good 12 volts DC 11.9, that's close enough. And then negative 5 volts, 
negative 5.02. So our voltages look excellent. So I would say the voltages are good. It is definitely the caps on the motherboard that are at fault at this point. So power supply recap successful. Motherboard needs attention. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you would like to see more like it, please come back. We will definitely have more Merchantosh content over the rest of this month. Again, go check out Joe's Computer Museum for more uh, Merchantosh content, and there will be a link to the playlist attached to this video.